Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here Official Guide to the Revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number. 299, page 299, problem number 17. On problem, in problem number 17, they give you a little graph there, which I'm not going to try to reproduce. It would be insane for me to try to reproduce it on, on, on the blackboard. So we're just going to talk about it. Part A says, part, part A is asking us, in which year did the expenditure increase the most from the, from the year before? In which year did the expenditure increase the most from the year before? Which is, the, which is the very same thing, which is the exact same thing as asking, which is the exact same thing by asking, where is the biggest spike? Where is the biggest spike that you see from one year to the next? Where is the biggest jump? And if you look at the graph carefully, we're looking at total expenditure. So that's the top graph, the very top one. The very bottom is the private expenditure. The one in the middle is the public expenditure. And, and the very top one is, is the total one. And the biggest spike that you see there, if you look carefully, you will see that it happens 1998 1998 was the year when expenditure increased the most from the year before You have to be careful as to how the question is worded. They are not asking in which year uh, we saw the biggest spike. They are asking us where is the biggest spike from one year to the next year. In which year do you see that the way they phrased it? It says for which year did the total expenditure increase the most from the year before? And that, that qualifies as 1998, not 1997. 1997 is where we see the, the increase in the spike. And in 98, of course, was the year where we saw the biggest jump from the year before. 1998. But there is nothing else to do here. There is, there is, no, there is, nothing, there is no solution as such. There is no, no mathematical work as such. You simply have to look at the graph. That's all it is. That's all. Let's do part B. In part B, in part B, they are saying for 2001, the public uh, in 2001 the private school expenditure was approximately what percentage of the total expenditure? All right. So for 2001, let's find out what the total expenditure is. In 2001, the total expenditure is. If you look at the graph carefully in 2001, you will see that it is 160. Actually, I take it back. You don't have to look at it carefully. It's very simple to see, actually. And the private expenditure in the same year is 30. So what the, what the question boils down to here is, so the question here is private expenditure is what percentage of total expenditure. So what the question boils down to here what the question boils down to here is this is 30 so basically they are asking us 30 is what percent of 160? And that's all it is. 30 is what percent of 160? And if you watch any of my percentage videos, and if you have not, just type in uh, revised GRE or just GRE and put in percentage problem, it will pop right up, and you will see you will see several percentage problem where we go through this routine as to how to convert the word problem into a proper equation. And this is how we do it. 30 is means equal. There are four words that we have to translate. Is 
what is replaced by the unknown which is x percent means over 100 percent means over 100 that's what the word percent literally means percent literally means percent literally means per 100 so 5 percent means 5 percent means 5 over 100 37 percent means 37 over 100 5.5 percent would mean 5.5 over 100 so x percent would mean x over 100 what percent what which is your x percent means over 100 off means times off means times 160 we just have to solve for it multiply both sides by 100 divide both sides by 60 and x equals 30 times 100 over six over 160 30 times 100 over over 160 let's do it on the top here x equals 30 times 100 over 160 and remember they use the word approximate so we don't have to, we don't have to go gung ho we don't have to waste our time trying to figure out the exact answer divide both up top and bottom by 10 so that draft that takes care of that 0 divide top and bottom by 2 this becomes 8 this becomes 5 divide top and bottom by 2 again this becomes 4 and this becomes 15 15 times 5 is 75 75 over 4 75 over 4. Let's see what we can do. How many 4's in a 7? 7 has 1 4. Cross out 7 and put down 1. The remaining 3 goes and joins this guy becomes 35. If it's 35, I'm going to pretend it is 36. 36 divided by 4 is 9. Or if you want to leave it at 35, it would have been 8. One more time. How many 4's in a 7? 7 has 1 4. The remaining 3 goes and joins this guy becomes 35. How many 4's in a 35? 35 has 8 fours. 8 fours are 32 with the remainder 3. So it's 18 and 3 quarter. 18 and 3 quarter, which is approximately 19. That's your answer. The answer is since you're looking for approximate, 19 would qualify. And that was it. That was problem number 17. Let me just quickly check in the back since the answers are right here. This was number 17, was it? Number 17, yes. They, they give us this 19 also. Alright, that was it. I'll see you tomorrow uh, where we'll solve the next problem that you see on the bottom of the page and then after that we have only one more problem to go on the following page and we're done. Okay, bye now.